This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to calculate the length of a diagonal of a cube. So in the uh, first section, we're just going to talk about the properties of a cube, and then we're going to follow up with two, count them, two examples. Let's get started. Hey, uh, most people know what a cube is. But just in case, let's talk about some obvious properties of cube. Like for instance, there are three different things to talk about. There are vertices, there are edges, and there are faces. Vertices are these uh, sharp points. So you take a look at there's a sharp point, sharp point, sharp point, sharp point. There are eight sharp points. Those are called vertices. Sometimes we refer to them as corners. Um, we've got where two faces meet. Okay, wait a minute. before we get to face where the faces meet, let's talk about what a face is. A face is a flat surface. So if you picture rolling a die, um, this looks like a six-sided die, and there are six sides, okay? Six faces. Okay, so it's a flat surface would be a face. Okay, so there's like here's the right face, here's the front face, here's the top face, and so on. Where two faces meet form an edge. And there you go, you've got an edge. Um, well, let's get to the properties of a cube. Well, any two edges that are touching are at 90 degree angles from each other. So intersecting edges are at right angles. Good to know. And of course, all of these edges are equal because it's a cube. It's not just any old prism, it's a cube. Uh, let's see, is that it? Uh, yeah, I think that's all we need. And I think now we have enough information to go on so we could find the diagonal of a cube. So let's say we start with the cube, and the cube has edges all with a length of six. So. If I were to take a look at the bottom face of the cube, I know that this edge and this edge intersect, and they're both have a, have a length of six. So if I were to draw those, I would know that I would have a right triangle. The right triangle would look like that. And this is six, this is six. How do I find the diagonal, which I'm gonna call C? Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to say 6 squared plus 6 squared is equal to 36. No, C squared. I'm getting ahead of myself. 6 squared is 36. 6 squared is 36. Add them together, you get 72. Take the square root of both sides, I get the square root of 72. Okay, so now I know that the length of the diagonal of just the bottom face, which is the diagonal of all the faces, they're all equal to the square root of 72. All right, now keep in mind that this edge right here also is 6 because all the edges are the same. And this diagonal down here, which is the diagonal of the bottom face, is square root of 72. Now if I put those two next to each other, um, they are going to form a right angle because any segment in the bottom plane would be perpendicular to segments, uh, this segment that's going up next to it, going up straight up, because these uh, edges are all perpendicular to the bottom plane. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that I've got two segments that are at right angles from each other. Okay, so what do I have? I really have the edge of my cube, the bottom diagonal of the face. I know this is six. I know the diagonal of the face is square root of 72. And now I'm gonna find this distance, which is the hypotenuse. Now, instead of calling it C, I'm gonna call it D for diagonal. Okay, so how does this work? Well, it's going to be 6 squared plus square root of 72 squared is equal to the diagonal squared. So I get 36, 72 equals D. So if I add these two together, I get 108. 
Oops, sorry, that was a D squared, wasn't it? If I take the square root of both sides, I get the square root of 108. Okay, now the square root of 108 is a pretty good answer. However, what you can do is you could break up the 108. You could break up 108 as, let's see, that would be 2 times 54. That would be 2 times 27. And 27 is 3 times 3 times 3. This is really what the square root of 108 is. Um, so I could take the square root of that pair. Square root of 4 is 2. I could take the square root of 9, which is 3. But I cannot take the square root of this last 3. So sometimes 2 times 3 is 6. We write our answer like this instead. It depends on how picky your teacher is. Um, okay, so either one of these is great. On a standardized test, we would see 6 squared of 3 being the correct, perfect answer. We could also take a calculator and we could figure out what this is and get a decimal answer if we wanted an approximation. All right, I'm going to flow through one more example, but I'm going to do that one far more quickly. Okay, so there will be less discussion, just calculation. For our second example, we're going to take a look at a cube that has a edge length of 10 units. All right, so this edge is 10, this edge is 10. Let's use the Pythagorean theorem to get the diagonal, okay, which would be this diagonal here of the bottom face. So this is going to be 100 plus 100. So that, of course, is 200. Take the square root of both sides. You get 200. Of course, that is an exact answer. We're going to leave that. Now, there's the diagonal of the bottom face. And we have, of course, this edge going straight up as 10. That can be used to form legs of another right triangle. So therefore, we could use Pythagoras again. So I could say 10 squared plus the square root of 200 squared is equal to c squared. Now, because this is really what I'm looking for, the length of the diagonal of the cube, I'm not going to call it c. I'm going to call it d for the length of the diagonal. So here is 100 the square and the square root cancel, you get 200. Add them together, you get 300. Take the square root. All right, so now let's play cleanup. Some teachers may allow this square root of 300, but what I'd like to do is break it up or simplify it is what it's called. So let's write it as Let's see, it's 3 times 100, and 100 is 10 times 10. Uh, okay, well, let's see, I could take the square root of 100, which is really 10. But I cannot take the square root of 3. There's no way to reduce that. I'll leave a link in the comments section to give you an idea how this reduction works. So you could see a video on that or a lesson on that. So you can kind of get an idea of what I'm doing here. Because I am I know I'm rolling through this kind of quickly. So here would be the best simplified exact answer. This is an exact answer, but it's not the best simplified. And of course, we could plug these into a calculator to figure out what is the square root of 300 to get an approximate solution. All right. So you've now learned how to find the length of the diagonal of a cube. Now please love it if you were to like this video and of course subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate that. It takes a lot of time and effort to get this thing done. Uh, and please go back to mathguide.com and check out our interactive quizzes, instructional videos, and text-based lessons. Have a great day.